Welcome to the 11th Desert Peaks Awards evening. My name is Dennis Smith. I'm the Executive Director of the Maricopa Association of Governments. We're pleased to have so many of you here with us tonight to help us honor regional excellence. MAG is a regional organization committed to making this region a great place to live through the united efforts of our 35 member agencies and our dedicated staff. In April, we saw our 47th anniversary of serving this region. I've personally been at MAG since 1976, and if I could be allowed a brief point of privilege, it was my honor to be mentored by Jack Dabalski, who's sitting right before you here, whose title then was MAG Secretary. But in reality, Jack was the father of MAG. We are honored to have Jack Dabalski with us this evening, and when I ask that he would raise his hand and be recognized. I would be remiss if I did not mention a few things about Jack. Through his leadership, MAG was one of the first in the nation to have a one-half cent sales tax for transportation that was very bold in 1985, and tonight we have past members of MAG who were part of that uh, process. So tonight you're gonna to hear about many great accomplishments of MAG and the member agencies. It, so, I'd like to just temper that a little bit and say, you know, it hasn't always been pleasant at MAG. In fact, in lo we lost a regional election in 1994 to complete the freeway system and provide funding for transit. But as the saying goes, through failure comes great wisdom. So how did that work? After losing the election in 1994, under Jack's leadership, we hired a consultant and questioned our practices and asked the MAG staff how to improve our organization. I can remember the culmination of that process in a meeting in the old league office, room 101. We had the MAG staff there, we had our consultant report there, and I can still remember to this day our lead transportation modeler, Mark Schlaffy, raised his hand and said, Jack, what is your vision for MAG? Jack's answer was, I want MAG to be the, be the best metropolitan planning organization in the nation. So tonight, I would like to thank Jack for laying the cornerstone for this organization. And Jack, I believe we're there. Now, Now for just a couple of housekeeping items for our award winners and anyone else who might like a photo to remember the evening, please note that we have set up a photograph location directly through the back doors and a little to the right. And once you've received your award, we suggest that if possible, you and your group go straight to the photograph location to avoid waiting in line after the ceremony, unless a member of your group is a presenter. That last part's important because some are gonna be uh, presenting right after you receive your award. We want to ensure we have a formal picture of each group for our newsletter and website. Now it is my honor to introduce our MC for the evening, young town mayor, Michael LaVault, who has served as chair of MAG since April, and after that was after Mesa Mayor Scott Smith resigned to run for governor. We're happy to report that tonight, Mayor LaVault was selected to serve a full term as chair, so he will be with us through June of 20. 15. Mayor LaVault has already been generous with his time in representing MAG and he's been an outstanding advocate for the region. We will hear more about his vision for the future during the passing of the gavel later in our program. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Michael LaVault. Good evening. Uh, Mayor Schulf uh, told me earlier this evening that he's the uh, only past chair still sitting on regional council. So whatever goes wrong tonight, Tom, we're blaming it on you. <laughs> Somebody applauded that. Well, I'm, I'm uh, honored uh, to stand here before you tonight uh, and help uh, celebrate uh, the many innovations being accomplished in the region. Programs and projects we will hear about tonight are the direct result of people, governments, and businesses working together 
to make great results possible. I'm glad to be here to help recognize so many efforts to demonstrate what regionalism is all about. We are fortunate to have many elected officials and other special guests with us uh, tonight, and I want to begin by recognizing representatives from several congressional offices. First, members of Congressman Pastor's uh, office who are with us tonight, his wife, uh, Venema Pastor. Thank you for coming. And uh, I think uh, I think with you, uh, you have uh, your granddaughter, Alexis. Uh, again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Congressman Pastor's former press secretary, Mora Cordova, with us tonight. Thank you for being here. We also have uh, 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 U.S. Representative John uh, McCatton's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, John McCatton from Representative Matt Salmon's office in Lewis Stein, and Dana Kennedy from Kirsten Cinema's office. Please welcome them if you would. Now, let me, uh, uh, let me recognize some of our uh, past uh, officers, if I could. They're here with us uh, tonight. I have a list of them here. Bear with me if you would. Okay, uh, these are uh, past officers that are with us uh, tonight. Um, if you would, when I call your name, please stand and be recognized. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, Mayor John Driggs, Phoenix. <laughs> Mayor Terry Goddard, Phoenix. <laughs> Mayor Hugh Holman, Tempe. <laughs> Mayor Keno Walker, Mesa. And uh, Mayor slash Supervisor, Marie Lopez Rogers, Avondale. <laughs> Mayor Jim Patterson, uh, Chandler. Uh, Mayor Elaine Scrubs, Glendale. <laughs> Mayor Woody Thomas, Litchfield Park. And Mayor Ken Thomas Chandler. Okay, are there any other past officers that I haven't mentioned? If there are, please stand and be recognized. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I want to recognize all of our current regional council members who are here uh, tonight. Uh, I want to do this as a group, uh, so uh, if uh, I could, uh, ask all of the members, current members of MAG Regional Council uh, to please stand and be recognized. Thank you all for your service. Uh, we'd also like to recognize any other elected officials who are here tonight. If you're a state legislator or county elected official, city council member, mayor, or tribal council member, uh, and we haven't uh, recognized you, would you please stand and, and be recognized now? We also want to acknowledge members uh, of the uh, MAG Management Committee are, who are here tonight. We rely on these members uh, to assist us in many of the policy-making decisions at MAG. Several of them uh, are joining us tonight. Uh, could I ask members of the Management Committee, please, if you would rise and be recognized. Thank you for all, uh, all of you that uh, just stood uh, to be recognized for your service to MAG. We appreciate your dedication to the region. Next, uh, we want to thank our many sponsors. We uh, have, uh, I think we set a record this year. We have uh, uh, unprecedented generosity on the part of our sponsors. Uh, they help defray the cost of our awards evening. Uh, and as I said, we've seen the highest level of uh, sponsorship uh, 
uh, so far uh, this uh, this year. So let me uh, uh, ask. Um, uh, let me recognize the representatives from the following agencies. If uh, you would please rise as I call your organization. Uh, I know many of you have several representatives, uh, and so uh, please feel free to all stand when your organization is recognized. First, we want to acknowledge our platinum sponsor, Copper Point Mutual Insurance Company. We greatly appreciate their platinum sponsorship. Let's thank Copper Point with a round of applause. We also had four gold sponsors. Will all of the representatives from the following gold sponsors stand to be recognized? And, we, and if we could save our applause until all groups are standing. Uh, Channon Construction Company, HDR Engineering Inc., MJ Insurance Inc., Parsons Brickerhoff. Uh, let's give our gold sponsors a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, I want to thank uh, our uh, silver sponsors. And again, uh, let's wait until all sponsors, uh, representatives have stood. Uh, Arizona Association of General Contractors, Arizona Commerce Authority, Arizona Lottery, Arizona Public Service Company, or APS, Arizona State University, Delta Dental of Arizona, Dickinson Wright, PLLC, uh, Kimley Horn and Associates, Inc., Uh, Salt River uh, Project, or SRP, Wilson and Company, Inc. Thank you for your support, and let's give them a round of applause. Okay, finally, uh, last but not least, we had uh, four bronze uh, sponsors. And again, if you would hold your applause until they all stand. Uh, Burgess and Nipple, Inc., uh, Terra System Southwest, Inc., Tri Advocates LLC, and Wells Fargo Bank NA, if you would stand and be recognized. Thank you all for your generous donations. You're uh, um, what helps make this, uh, this whole thing possible. Now, let's uh, recognize our prestigious judging panel tonight. Uh, this uh, judging panel had the tough task of sorting through many excellent nominations received and selecting the Desert Peaks Award recipients. The effort and dedication that our panelists put into the judging was outstanding. Their insight and knowledge of regional issues was especially valuable in choosing tonight's recipients. As I call your name, which we'll do in alphabetical order, please stand at your table to receive a token of our appreciation. First, we thank uh, Mr. Kerwin Brown, President and CEO of the Greater Phoenix Black Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Brown is also Treasurer and Western Regional Director for the United States Black Chamber, uh, Inc. He is a member of the African American Advisory Council for the Arizona House of Representatives, where he chairs the Business Subcommittee. Please help me thank Mr. Cohen Brown. Our next judge uh, is a familiar name, uh, and frankly, uh, he's a uh, well, he's a judge. Uh, the uh, Honorable Boyd Dunn, former Chandler Mayor, uh, Judge Dunn was appointed to the Arizona Superior Court in 2011 after serving as an Assistant Attorney General. Judge Dunn currently sits on the Executive Committee of the Arizona Judges Association. Please help me thank Boyd Dunn. Next, we want to thank Diane McCarthy, Director of Business Partnerships and Government Affairs for WestMEC. Ms. McCarthy's career includes eight years in the Arizona House of Representatives and four years on the Arizona Corporation Commission, where she was the first woman elected to serve. She was the founding president of, uh, of WestMark and a founding member of Fighter Country Partnership, which will be recognized later uh, this evening during our award, uh, uh, our award uh, uh, as an award recipient, I should say. Please give Diane McCarthy our thanks. Our next judge is Art Othone, 
uh, and, uh, Art is president and CEO of El Bravo Sky Harbor LLC, a family-owned restaurant business. Mr. O'Fallon is a past chair of Westmark and has served in the administrations of Arizona Governor Rose Mofford uh, and Phoenix Mayor Terry Goddard. Thank you, Art O'Fallon. <laughs> Next, we recognize George Pettit. Uh, former Gilbert Town Manager and Professor of Practice of the School of Public Affairs at ASU, where he is developing the next generation of municipal managers. Mr. Pettit served in local government for 30 years, including eight years as manager. Uh, please help me recognize George Pettit. Our next judge uh, is former Maricopa County Manager David Smith, now Chief Operating Officer of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Mr. Smith retired from Maricopa County in 2012. After 18 years of service in 2001, he was named by Governing Magazine as Public Official of the Year. Please help me thank David Smith. Last but not least, we want to thank Claudia Walters. Mrs. Walters uh, is Executive Vice President of Mesa United Way and has also served as a Mesa City Councilwoman and as Vice Mayor of Mesa. Mrs. Walters chaired MAG's efforts to improve elderly mobility in the Valley and is current president of the Arizona Management Society. Please help me thank Claudia Walters. Very impressive panel. Thank you all again for your efforts. We appreciate it. Tonight, of course, is about recognizing regional cooperation and to celebrate the many accomplishments taking place uh, in our region. As part of that celebration, the MAG Executive Committee wanted to take a few minutes to share the success of MAG, uh, MAG with the broader regional community. In lieu of a State of the Region address, we've prepared a 15-minute video to give you a better idea of who we are and what we do. So, without further ado, let's roll the tape. Do you take a freeway to work? Yes, I take the freeway uh, to work. I take the I-17 and then 101. Ride transit, walk or bike. Yes, I like to take the light rail to get around. Are you concerned about air quality? Yes, I do care about the environment, especially air quality, because my family and I live here and I want them to breathe clean air. Or do you know someone over 60 who feels isolated? Yes, we have a friend. We're trying to get out of the apartment more often so that she can do more things. Does MAG impact your life? Yes, 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 yes. The Maricopa Association of Governments, or MAG, is responsible for addressing many issues that directly impact the quality of life for 4 million Valley residents. Fiscal year 2014 was no exception. Here are just a few of the many accomplishments that took place in some of MAG's program areas. Since 1985, MAG and its transportation partners have been responsible for the completion of 138 centerline miles on the regional freeway system, plus an additional 40 miles being completed this summer on the Loop 303 in the West Valley. Significant progress was made in converting Loop 303 into a modern six-lane freeway between I-10 and US 60 Grand Avenue. The Arizona Department of Transportation completed six lanes from just south of Grand to Peoria Avenue in Surprise. A six-lane stretch also opened between Peoria and Glendale Avenues. Crews will complete more work in 2014, including the $145 million interchange in Goodyear that links I-10 with Loop 303. The first leg of State Route 24, the Gateway Freeway between Loop 202 and Ellsworth Road in Southeast Mesa, has opened to traffic thanks to an acceleration of funding by the City of Mesa. Elevated ramps now connect Loop 202 and State Route 24 near the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. A critical transportation focus this year was a solicitation of public comment on the draft environmental impact statement for the South Mountain Freeway. 
Along with six community forums, the period included a day-long public hearing at the Phoenix Convention Center, which attracted hundreds of participants. The proposed freeway follows an alignment along Pecos Road and turns north along 59th Avenue, where it will connect to I-10. South Mountain Freeway is the last piece needed to complete the original regional loop freeway system. It's been a critical piece of the MAG Regional Transportation Plan since 1985 when it was passed as part of Proposition 300. It was also part of Proposition 400, which was approved by voters in 2004. More than 8,000 comments were received during the 60-day comment period. ADOT is expected to release the final environmental impact statement later this year. The region celebrated as the first phase of the Northern Parkway was completed, which included the construction of a new interim four-lane roadway from Saraville Avenue to Dysart Road. Northern Parkway represents one of the largest collaborations of governmental agencies in the state. This parkway will give residents of our communities easy access to the Loop 303, Loop 101, and Grand Avenue. It will reduce travel time and congestion across the West Valley. Also opening to traffic, pedestrian traffic that is, the new Litchfield Park underpass near Wigwam Boulevard. The underpass allows pedestrians to pass safely under, rather than across, busy Litchfield Road. Public artwork incorporates elements celebrating the community of Litchfield Park. More improvements also continued on Grand Avenue with a resurfacing of 71st and 83rd Avenues in Peoria. Other improvements on Grand included new turn lanes and traffic signals between 71st Avenue in Glendale and 19th Avenue in Phoenix. A much needed second left turn lane on northbound 19th Avenue at Grand also was completed. The entire Grand Avenue rehabilitation project will be completed in 2014. Continued improvements in transit were also seen. Of particular note, the extensions of light rail in the North Central Valley along 19th Avenue and into downtown Mesa in the East Valley. The region continued to benefit from development stimulated by light rail. As Valley Metro continued to refine and expand the total transit network to better serve passengers, ridership reached a record of more than 73.4 million passengers in fiscal year 2013. The Freight Transportation Framework Study was completed this year and it came with some surprises. The study was launched with the goal of understanding the Sun Corridor's role in the global supply chain and potential freight opportunities. Certainly there were some initial thoughts. The study would recommend the development of a major inland port. But what the study of the market found was that the east-west freight flowing through our state was primarily finished goods. What this meant was that there would be few opportunities for the development of businesses that would add value. What the study did find was that the greatest freight opportunities are with Mexico, and it recommended improving transportation connections to Mexico and developing freight activity centers in the Sun Corridor. Another significant study began this year to develop a corridor master plan for the I-10, I-17 corridor known as the Spine. The Spine study will extend from the Loop 101 and I-17 interchange in the north all the way to the I-10 intersection with the Loop 202 Santan Freeway in the south. By studying both corridors together, economies of scale can be realized, and a common vision formed for addressing existing and future travel demand. Also this year, MAG policy committees began discussions on ways to increase transportation revenues. Regional transportation revenues continue to be hurt by the after-effects of the recession and declining gas tax revenues. Since the gas tax is fixed at 18 cents per gallon and hasn't changed since 1991, increasing fuel economy and inflation have eaten away at the major source of road maintenance and improvement funding. MAG will continue to monitor research and proposals for increasing transportation funding, both at the local and national levels. Improving the Valley's economy continues to be the focus of the MAG Economic Development Committee. Efforts to improve trade relations with Mexico and Canada remained top priorities. For example, with tourism a major sector of the Arizona economy, MAG, along with other agencies, is supporting efforts to make it easier for pre-cleared Mexican visitors to travel to the entire state of Arizona, instead of being limited to only 75 miles. 
MAG also provided funding to the City of Phoenix to help support a Mexico Trade Investment Office, an effort also supported by the City of Tucson and State of Arizona. MAG has changed the conversation about Mexico. We realize that from an economic perspective, we are all border cities. Business and tourism are essential to our economy. We are working in exciting new ways to improve trade relations. Other activities this year included participating in a binational economic forum in Mexico, the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between MAG and colleges and universities to improve the region's ability to win competitive grants, analyzing medical tourism opportunities, and hosting tours of regional incubators and economic development organizations. MAG secured grant funding on behalf of the Western Regional Alliance to combine resources and speed up development of key infrastructure in the Intermountain West. Additional efforts focused on updating regional data on the GreaterPhoenixRising.com website and the launch of another website, ConnectBN.com, a business-to-business e-platform that will help connect individual businesses across international boundaries. The region scored a major air quality victory when the Environmental Protection Agency approved the air quality plan that led Maricopa County to achieve compliance with the health-based standard for dust, or PM10. This plan, also known as the MAG 5% plan for PM10 because it reduced emissions at least 5% each year, was prepared through a collaborative effort by MAG, the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, the Maricopa County Air Quality Department, and numerous stakeholders. The plan was submitted in 2012 and includes many of the most stringent dust control measures in the country. The approval is the result of many years of hard work and collaboration by many stakeholders. These efforts have resulted in dramatic improvements in the concentration of dust in the valley. Critical to the approval of the plan was EPA's concurrence with 17 technical demonstrations that exceedances at air quality monitors were the result of dust storms or other natural events that could not be controlled. But the documents needed to prove those events totaled more than 1,700 pages. No air quality plan can prevent dust caused by high winds. We must continue to work with the EPA to make sure requirements for proving dust events is reasonable. It shouldn't have to take thousands of pages to prove a haboob took place. The EPA needs to recognize and accommodate the unique characteristics of our desert environment. The approval by EPA finds that Maricopa County attained the federal standard by the required 2012 deadline. In another successful effort, MAG provided assistance to the Sun Quarter Metropolitan Planning Organization. MAG conducted the initial conformity analysis for the PM10 and PM2.5 non-attainment areas in Pinal County. The analysis resulted in the removal of the conformity lapse in the Pinal County non-attainment areas, allowing transportation projects to proceed. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Another environmental effort this year was a series of recycling videos in cooperation with its Solid Waste Advisory Committee and the Valleywide Recycling Partnership, MAG produced a series of short educational videos designed to inform residents how to reduce holiday trash. MAG continued to help improve lives through human services. Pilot projects launched through the MAG Regional Age-Friendly Network, overseen by the MAG Human Services Coordinating Committee, included bringing nationally acclaimed models like Villages and Time Banks to Phoenix and Tempe and working to improve access to alternative transportation for older adults in the Northwest Valley. MAG also earned the region recognition as one of the best intergenerational communities in the United States. The Connect 60 Plus website continued to offer older adults a means to connect with services, people, and resources in their communities. The MAG Continuum of Care Regional Committee on Homelessness is gaining national attention for more effectively coordinating services that place individuals and families in housing. The Continuum continues to bring millions of federal dollars into the region to support homeless assistance programs. In December, the White House declared Phoenix the first U.S. city to identify and house all chronically homeless veterans, achieving what is known as functional zero. The Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness, through an incredible program called Project H3Vets, is proving that we can end homelessness in our region, not just manage it. We've started by ending chronic homelessness among our veteran population, but we're not going to end there. 
We are so proud to partner in ending long-term homelessness for men and women who have served our country. It's the least we can do for our brave veterans. This could not have been possible without so many great community collaborations, including government, the business community, nonprofits, foundations, the faith community, and especially the great work being done here at MAG through the MAG Continuum of Care, led by Chair Kevin Harkey and an incredible staff person, Brandy Mead. MAG also continued to provide resources in the area of domestic violence. 95% of law enforcement agencies have implemented best practices defined by MAG to improve the way they arrest offenders. New resources include the creation of finddvservices.com, an interactive map of victim advocacy services to improve the access people have to safety and justice. A wealth of data is available at MAG to conduct regional planning. The MAG Information Services staff went a step further, using the data to create tools to enhance economic development. They then toured the valley, demonstrating how these tools and data can help cities understand characteristics specific to their communities, and how the information can be used to analyze opportunities at the regional and local scale. MAG continued to provide outreach to residents through its public involvement efforts, with an emphasis on reaching Title VI populations, such as minority, disability, and low-income communities. As technology evolves, MAG consistently seeks innovative communication methods, such as videos, social media, web applications, and improving the ability to access meeting materials through electronic handheld devices. MAG communication staff also continued implementation of the Don't Trash Arizona campaign to address the health, safety, environmental, and economic consequences of highway littering. MAG continued to enhance the Regional Community Network, a fiber optic private internet that helps cities and towns with operations ranging from traffic control to police and fire calls. MAG connected additional 911 dispatch centers through the network at no additional cost to cities, increasing their bandwidth and ensuring 911 capability in the event of communications disruptions. MAG also began testing new software to further improve video sharing and connectivity through the regional network. The IT division also worked to develop custom applications to make it easier to manage data internally and to engage the public through the web. Finally, in the area of fiscal services, MAG received the Government Finance Officers Award for the 2013 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for the 15th year in a row, as well as the award for the 2014 Unified Planning Work Program and Annual Budget for the 13th year in a row. MAG is one of only a few MPOs in the nation to receive these distinctions. In addition, the annual financial audit and the single audit found no material findings. And last but not least, MAG successfully converted and implemented all accounting functions to a new accounting software. The live date for implementation was January 1, 2014, meaning all of the great work at MAG can seamlessly continue. Uh, uh, let's go on to a special moment now in our uh, presentation. Uh, tonight we're recognizing a, an individual who's been a driving force uh, in Arizona uh, for the past 23 years. We're presenting Congressman Ed Pastor with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Born in a small mining community of Claypool, Representative Pastor was the first member of his family to attend college graduating from ASU with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Chemistry, which he taught uh, later in high school. He soon found out that he had another uh, kind of chemistry, that is a chemistry for a love of public service. Ed Pastor went on to get a law degree and joined Governor Raul Castro's uh, staff to help enforce the Civil Rights Act. He was elected to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors in 1976, where he served three terms before leaving to run for the seat vacated by the late Morris Udall. As a congressman, Representative Pastor has never forgotten his community and continues to address the issues that affect this state. He's advocated for the resources needed to meet the demands that come with rapid growth, uh, and he's also been a fierce advocate for transportation dollars for the Valley, understanding that by easing traffic, uh, that is easing traffic congestion, our quality of life improves. 
He has spearheaded legislation to provide funding to build the Valley's light rail system. He secured millions more for buses and maintenance operations. He's been a key supporter of efforts to revitalize the Salt River uh, and create economic opportunities along the river route. Representative Pastor has been an ardent supporter of immigration reform and was one of the first members of Congress to introduce legislation that would help undocumented immigrants remain in the U.S. and secure legal residency. He has helped local governments by helping equip firefighters and law enforcement with the tools that they need. Congressman Pastor has a deep interest in the arts and has supported funding for museums and cultural centers. Another great passion of his is education, opening the door for students to explore career opportunities and implementing programs in disadvantaged neighborhoods. His, uh, he has uh, supported health care, uh, including securing funding for bilingual nursing programs, Phoenix Children's Hospital, and St. Joseph's Hospital. Yet, despite his advocacy for funding important projects, many don't know that his office budget is listed as among the most frugal in Washington, D.C. Quite an accomplishment uh, in this era. We could go on for uh, a lot longer uh, talking about the projects and accomplishments uh, that he has uh, led and, and spearheaded, uh, and the national and international acclaim that he's received. Just uh, suffice it to say that he leaves behind a great legacy of good works and goodwill. While con the Congressman himself was unable to join us in person tonight, we are honored to have, accepting on his behalf, his wife, Verma. Uh, Mrs. Pastor, uh, we're honored uh, to have you here uh, with us tonight to accept this award. And I know, as an elected official, I know how important the spouses are. You really are the ones that keep things going in the household. So if you would come forward and uh, receive the award. for Ed not being here, excuse me, the congressman not being here. Uh, he's up in D.C. still finishing up his term. He'll be there until December 31st. Then he'll be home. Yay! <laughs> and I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you for the award, and I'd like to read a letter that he sent to Mayor Laurent. I would like to take... I would like to thank the Maricopa Association of Government for presenting me with a Lifetime Achievement Award. It has been my privilege these past 38 years to work alongside leaders and advocates in our community on transportation projects, environmental projects, and other policies to improve our region. Hopefully, I have played some small part in making the lives of Arizonans easier and more efficient. I am humbled and honored to accept this award from my peers and an organization such as the Maricopa Association of Governments, which has, a long, which has long been dedicated to the collaboration of local governments and entities to work towards bettering the met metropolitan Phoenix area. Our region has seen dramatic growth in recent years, and it must remain a priority for public servants, industry, industry leaders, and community advocates to cooperate and help Maricopa reach its fullest potential. I commend you all for your effort to work within the community to address the many needs of our fellow Arizonans. Please accept my sincere gratitude for this honor and my best wishes for your present and future endeavors. Thank you. Now let's move on to the formal awards portion uh, of our program tonight. Uh, we see, received uh, many outstanding entries, as I said earlier this evening, uh, across all categories. I hope that uh, you, you'll all uh, have a chance to read the descriptions uh, in your program that summarize the other great things happening in our region. But tonight we're here to honor those uh, projects and individuals judged to be uh, to best represent the highest standards of regionalism. Each recipient will be honored with a unique symbol of regional excellence, 
that is the three peaks, uh, which appear on each award and represent regional cooperation, vision, and commitment. For each category, a designated project representative will be called on to make remarks on behalf of the group, after which the remaining partners will be called to the stage to accept their awards. Our first award is for public partnership to help, uh, and, to, and to help me present this award uh, is Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton. Mayor Stanton uh, is a member of the MAG Executive Committee, Economic Development Committee, and Transportation Policy Committee. And tonight he was elected as the new MAG Treasurer. Please welcome Mayor Greg Stanton. Mayor? All right, thank you, Mayor Laval. This is a great night. That was a uh, terrific video showing the breadth and depth of the work of this uh, organization. Dennis, you and your team should be very, very proud uh, of that video and the work that it represents. And of course, Verma Pastor, uh, I've said it many times and I'll say it again, Phoenix wouldn't be Phoenix without the support and leadership of Congressman Pastor. He well deserves that uh, Lifetime uh, Achievement Award. And what I like about this night is not only do I get to see so many of my colleagues and representatives from around the valley, but what I love is that we've invited so many of our former elected officials, former mayors and, uh, and board members, and a lot of that work you saw in that video is because of your longstanding uh, leadership. We stand on your shoulders, including the shoulders of the great Jack uh, uh, Dabowski. Uh, so thank you, Jack, for being here. If there were a Hall of Fame for leaders of regional planning organizations, you would be a first ballot unanimous choice for the Hall of Fame for that organization. All right, now on to the awards. I'm uh, honored to give to present the Public Partnership Award. Award recognizes a group or project that has demonstrated a commitment to regionalism through public sector or nonprofit partnership. And the judges selected, there's no drama here, right? You've already seen it in your programs. The, the judges selected Northern Parkway Phase One as a recipient of the public partnership role. Let's roll the tape. The first phase of Northern Parkway from Saraval Avenue to Dysart Road opened to traffic in December. The Saraval to Dysart segment is the first of a five-phase project that will ultimately be a 12 and a half mile long, high capacity parkway connecting Loop 303 to US 60 Grand Avenue. The Northern Parkway will provide much needed east-west access to major transportation corridors, link West Valley cities, attract commercial and industrial opportunities, offer convenient access to Luke Air Force Base, and provide a direct route to Glendale Sports and Entertainment District. Planning and coordinating a project of this magnitude was no easy feat and included collaborative efforts among city, county, state, and federal agencies. It also included citizen participation and voter approval. The parkway is the largest non-state highway project in the MAG Regional Transportation Plan. West Valley residents have already begun to enjoy a shorter, smoother commute as a result of this public partnership. Here to accept the award on behalf of the city of Glendale and to represent the full partnership is Glendale Mayor Jerry Wires. Jerry, come on down. My pleasure to accept this award on behalf of the City of Glendale and our partners on the Northern Parkway Project, the Maricopa County Department of Transportation, and the Flood Control, Flood Control District, the City of El Mirage and the City of Peoria, the Arizona Department of Transportation, the Federal Highway Administration, and my favorite, Luke Air Force Base. We're so very proud of Luke Air Force Base. Also the Maricopa Association of Governments. Thank all of you for your hard work on this continuing project, which is so critical to the safety and the economic vitality of the entire West Valley. It's great to be here tonight celebrating the completion of phase one of the Northern Parkway. It is the first of a five phase project that will ultimately become a 12 and a half mile capacity expressway connecting Loop 303 to US 60 or Grand Avenue. Traversing the cities of Glendale, Peoria, El Mirage, Maricopa County, and Luke Air Force Base. Upon completion, Northern Parkway will handle approximately twice its current carrying capacity 
and provide much needed east-west route in the central portion of the West Valley. Construction of phase one began following a February 2012 groundbreaking. The parkway was opened to traffic in December of 2013 and has already become a popular corridor stretching four miles from Sarville Avenue to Dysart Road. The criteria for this award was to demonstrate how stakeholders work cooperatively in the region. This project is a model example of regional cooperation. We're very proud of that. We've been working together on this project for many years, beginning in 2001, long before I was a part of Glendale. When Glendale voters approved a half cent tax for transportation projects, including the Northern Parkway. A regional committee was formed soon after, comprised of the same organizations that you see, or should see standing here behind me tonight, but maybe a little bit later, to formulate this initial concept for the Northern Parkway, which became the basis for including it in the regional transportation plan in 2003. Maricopa County voters approved the funding for the regional transportation plan in 2004, and Peoria voters followed suit in 2005. That's how Northern Parkway was born and why it has become a reality today. Northern Parkway is unique in the high capacity roadway that is not owned and built by the state, is not owned and built by the state, although Glendale took the lead in identifying the corridor. It took all three cities and county to garner support throughout the valley as Northern Parkway project was the, to be the largest non-state highway project in a regional transportation plan. The Northern Parkway also offers exciting economic development opportunities by linking this new growth area to regional national highway system and providing direct access to prime developable property. It also offers unique proximity to a short line railway, railroad providing opportunities for intermodal trade and potential a shipping hub for sea to rail to truck transportation. In closing, I'm very excited for and look forward to the future of the West Valley. I'm proud to accept this award for the dedicated group of the past and present elected officials, Nurse Scrubs, I know you're in the audience somewhere, and professionals, employees, the commission members and voters who made this project happen. Now it's on to phase two. Thank you all very much. Okay, uh, our uh, next award uh, is the uh, Public-Private Partnership. Uh, this award uh, is uh, uh, gonna be presented by uh, Mayor Lana Mook of the City of El Mirage. Uh, Lana is a, uh, I should say, Mayor Mook, <laughs> is a, a member of the MAG Regional Council, uh, has been a member since 2010, a member of the Executive Committee since 2013. Let's welcome Mayor Lana Mook. This award category recognizes the group uh, or project that has demonstrated a commitment to regionalism through a public-private partnership. The judges chose to honor two projects for the Public-Private Partnership Award. The first recipient is Don't Let Our Air Go Up in Smoke, a winter no burden campaign, and we'll see a video. The winter holidays mean young families gathering around their fireplaces, chimeneas, and fire pits. These traditions also mean increases in asthma and other lung problems when air quality pays the price. The Arizona Department of Environmental Quality and the Maricopa County Air Quality Department call no burn days to restrict wood burning on high pollution advisory days. This winter, new, stricter standards of fine dust particles known as PM 2.5, combined with the Valley's history of winter burning, brought the region perilously close to violating the standard. In an unprecedented effort to maintain compliance, the agencies launched an aggressive outreach campaign. It began with a press conference encouraging people not to burn wood on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. Relying on the collaboration of business, industry, health, environmental, and government stakeholders, the campaign concluded successfully. Air quality improved from the previous year, 
There were no air quality violations for PM 2.5 and the region stayed in attainment with national air quality standards. To accept the award on behalf of the Maricopa County Air Quality Department and to represent the project, we'd like to call to the stage and become Maricopa County Supervisor Steve Chukri. You know she's a pro when she can say chukri correctly. So uh, thank you, Mayor. And really, I, I accept this uh, award, this honor, on behalf of my colleagues at the county, my other supervisors, uh, one of which, uh, Marie Lopez Rogers, is here, so I want to make sure I acknowledge her. Uh, but you might question, here in Arizona, as a native, why we have to tell people and educate people to not want to create heat uh, in the desert. But it is a reality, and, and uh, the no-burn days really do make a huge effect on our air quality. And so we can't do this alone. I want to congratulate and thank Bill Wiley for his work. You know, I know Eric Massey is here with ADEQ and did a, a lot of work, as well as Amanda Reeve, who's a creative one in, in all of this. But here's, here's the other, I think, unique characteristic of this. Oftentimes in government, we think that regulation is the answer. And this campaign shows that education can also matter and can also make a big difference. And in this case, it did. It made a huge difference. The campaign was overwhelmingly successful with over 75 stakeholders from the private sector, from the public sector, coming together to say, we're going to problem solve. We're going to make something unique happen here, not only in Maricopa County, but in Arizona. So I applaud all the stakeholders. It's your work. I just get to stand up here and get the award. But thank all of you, and thank you for the kind honor. The Greater Phoenix Age-Friendly Network is made possible through a robust collaboration of public and private partners, including local, regional, and state agencies, two philanthropies, and nine nonprofit agencies. It is supported by a leadership team of 45 members. These partners are connecting older adults with people of all ages in their communities. The region is faced with the dynamics of a diverse aging population. There are currently 463,000 people aged 65 and older in our region. By 2020, that number will increase to 700,000. The Greater Phoenix Age-Friendly Network provides assistance to communities wanting to be more inclusive of older adults and includes an interactive website, connect60plus.com. Pilot programs range from time banks, where participants exchange volunteer hours, to connecting seniors with transportation options. The network is the region's response to leveraging the time and talents of older adults while connecting them in a more meaningful way to their communities. Accepting the award for Phoenix and representing this partnership is Phoenix Mayor Greg Stem. Thank you, very, Mayor, very much. Uh, this network stands for the principle that our seniors and our respective communities are our most important asset. And the planning and thinking and strategic thinking that needs to go on to make sure that our seniors live the highest quality of life, not somewhere else, but right in place where they currently are, is as important as any other policy, planning, and strategy that we have. And that includes living conditions, transportation, recreation, making sure that our seniors feel that they are wanted and needed in our schools and other uh, community decision-making uh, opportunities. We need our seniors to be fully involved in our communities. And that's why this network has been so successful, because we share that value. We've had so many great uh, partners. I want to thank Tempe, Northwest Valley, Scottsdale, Wickenburg, City of Maricopa. We have private partners, including the Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust, and of course, the Pfizer Foundation, which has funded this great work. And this has not been recognized here at MAG, 
but this network has been nationally recognized as one of the best aging in place networks uh, in the entire country. And Dennis, I do want to give a, a special shout out. Uh, Amy St. Peter is a gem, and she is the real reason why we're here. So let's give Amy St. Peter a huge round of applause. Thank you for this award on behalf of Phoenix and all of our partners that got us here. We're going to roll up our sleeves and get even more work because our seniors deserve our best. Thank you. Our next award is for professional service. Here to help present this award is Missfield Park Mayor Thomas Schoff. Mayor Schoff is an active member of MAG, having served as chair and past chair of the Regional Council, as well as chair of the Economic Development Committee. Mayor Schoff. Good evening. It is uh, it's indeed a pleasure to stand up here and present the Professional Service Award. This award goes to the individual from any organization that has significantly contributed to regionalism through sustained professional efforts. These efforts include things such as service on MAG committees and programs. This year the award goes to the former city manager of the city of Avondale, Charles McClendon. Let's take a look at what he's done. Charles P. McClendon, known by most simply as Charlie, has served the residents of Glendale, Avondale, and the region for nearly three decades. Mr. McClendon's commitment to public service began in the MAG region in 1985, when he began a 17-year career with the city of Glendale. Mr. McClendon joined the city of Avondale in 2002 and was appointed city manager in 2004. Upon this appointment, he became Avondale's representative on the MAG Management Committee. In this capacity, Mr. McClendon became one of MAG's longest tenured members. He served as chair of the committee from 2008 to 2009. Mr. McClendon brought a spirit of committed regional excellence to MAG. He was especially involved in population demographics and served as chair of the MAG Population Technical Advisory Committee. He also served on a Census Advisory Subcommittee and worked on a task force to define the operating policies and procedures for the MAG organization. A constant supporter of MAG, Charlie's easygoing attitude and cheerful demeanor paved the way for cooperative working relationships. Now it is my honor to introduce Charles, as we know him better, Charlie McClendon. He has traveled from Cathedral City, California, his new home, to be with us tonight. Charlie? I won't, I won't belabor this. I'll keep it mercifully short. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a better person. I'm a better manager because of the time I spent here. Uh, 17 years at the city of Glendale, 12 years at the city of Avondale. There's many people, many who are in the audience tonight that touched my life, that touched my career during that time, and I thank you so much for that. Um, and it would be a mistake to try to call out everybody because I'd forget somebody. But I did work for two exceptional mayors, Mayor Scruggs uh, in Glendale, Mayor Lopez Rogers. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you all. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, you look like you belong here. So, uh, we certainly wish you a lot of success uh, as you uh, continue your uh, public service uh, efforts. Our next award is perhaps most representative of the reason we're here tonight. Regional partnership. That's uh, something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, here to help me present this award is uh, Buckeye Mayor Jackie Mack. Mayor Mack. Mayor Mick was elected as an at-large member of the Executive Committee tonight, and he is outgoing chair of our Transportation Policy Committee. Mayor Mick? Thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be here tonight. Thank all of you for coming. The Regional Partnership Award goes and honors two or more MAG 
agencies, member agencies that have demonstrated a commitment to regionalism through cooperative efforts. The judges selected the East Valley Recycling Alliance for this award. Let's more, hear more about it. Recycling and environmental education and outreach are global issues, but they were often handled individually by jurisdictions in the East Valley. That changed in 2012 when the town of Gilbert reached out to other East Valley cities to form a group that would share ideas and work together for regional recycling, education, and outreach efforts. The group has shared marketing strategies, training materials, and knowledge in an open forum, benefiting each individual municipality and the region. The cities of Chandler, Gilbert, Mesa, Queen Creek, Tempe, and Scottsdale formed the East Valley Recycling Alliance in 2012. The group has worked together in innovative education efforts ranging from plastic bag collection to recycling workshops to mobile phone apps. The group has consistently worked cooperatively for the benefit of regional recycling and environmental issues. The open informal meetings have created a culture for sharing ideas and promoting recycling region-wide. Okay, our next award is for Outstanding Economic Development uh, Champion. Here to present this award is Scottsdale Mayor Jim Lane. He was just up here, he didn't he save him a trip to the gym, I guess, up and down. <laughs> Mayor Lane has served as MAG Treasurer. <laughs> Mayor Lane has served as MAG Treasurer for the past year and tonight was elected as Vice Chair. He's past chair of the MAG TPC and serves on our Economic Development Committee. Mayor Lane? Economic development, is there any more important, other than maybe the environment, other issue for us to discuss? I, I think not. The Outstanding Economic Development Champion Award is presented to a business, economic development agency, or individual within the Maricopa region that has demonstrated a commitment to creating an environment conducive to promoting regional economic growth and development in collaboration with the public sector. This is an important area, and it's certainly a very important area on a regional basis. I think we've all come to recognize that through the years, and, and these groups, as we get them together, these alliances and partnerships play heavily into how we uh, develop an attractive marketplace for relocating companies, retaining businesses and, and investment within our communities. And though there is no drama in this because it has already been determined, the judges were very wise in selecting the West Valley Partners Loop Forward campaign for the project. So let's roll that 10-minute uh, tape. Luke Air Force Base is the largest active duty F-16 training base in the world. Thanks to a regional partnership called Luke Forward, the Air Force is moving to the next generation of fighter jets, the new F-35. Recognizing Luke's tremendous impact on the state's economy, 14 West Valley jurisdictions, known as the West Valley Partners, came together in an unprecedented effort to advocate for the F-35. They launched Luke Forward to generate awareness of the positive impacts the F-35 would bring to Arizona. During the campaign, more than 21,000 residents registered their support for the F-35 coming to Luke. Arizona's congressional delegation and all 91 Arizona cities and towns formally supported the F-35 training mission. The efforts paid off when the Air Force announced that 144 F-35s would be stationed at Luke. Immediate benefits included more than $100 million in construction projects and improvements, resulting in 3,000 jobs. The F-35s began arriving in February. The extraordinary Luke Forward campaign will have a positive impact in the region for decades to come. Accepting the award for Peoria and commenting on the behalf of the Look Forward campaign is Peoria Mayor Bob Barrett.
Thank you. This effort, this effort started years and years ago. Uh, we found out that Luke Air Force Base was, was possibly going to get the F-35, but maybe not. At that point in time, we met with everybody you can think of. I met with the Secretary of the Air Force, met with the Air Force Chief of Staff, and he said the F-35 is going to be a weapons platform that will last 40 years. Now, we've acquired the F-35 through this effort, and this was a tough effort. It was an outstanding result through the efforts of everybody around. This impacts each one of our cities individually, plus our region and the state of Arizona in a major way. It's a $2 billion economic engine that resides here in the West Valley. We've worked at every level of government to make this happen over the years. We've worked at the city level, the county level, throughout the state, the legislature, our Congress members, the judicial system, highest levels within the Department of Defense to assure the long-term viability of Luke Air Force Base's mission. As you've just seen, the Loop Forward campaign was an extremely critical component of making this happen and to bringing the F-35 to Luke Air Force Base. I would like to recognize some of the people who will not be able to come up to the stage because they aren't the mayors or anything else. One of the original early driving forces was uh, former P uh, Glendale Mayor Lane Scruggs. So will you please stand? She's been a phenomenal leader of the Luke Air Force Base issue generally and on the Luke campaign specifically. And I'd also like to take just a moment to recognize Rusty Mitchell and his community initiatives team from Luke. Rusty, would you please stand? <laughs> we do this for a lot of reasons. Our national security is obvious, uh, the, the economic impact of, of Luke on the military installations, and we also do this for the people who are serving in the service. I'm going to take just a personal minute here. When I came back from Vietnam, I landed and we went to uh, San Francisco International for our flights out. And I was in uniform. And I went in there, this was 1971. And I sat down at the bar, and you would have thought I smelled bad because everybody moved away. The only person that came in and sat down next to me and talked to me was a PFC. And he was an army guy. And he was on his way back for his second tour. And he was on his way back for his second tour because that was the only way you could feed his family. Because when you went to Vietnam, you, were, you didn't pay any taxes, and you got combat pay. That was the only thing that could, could sustain his family at that point in time. Since then, we've moved on. And, and I mean, when I went through the, the airport, people were, were less than nice. But we've turned that around. And, and my simple plea to you tonight is just this. I know the war is winding down. I know people are losing interest in what's happening. I, I want you to remember that the people out there, they didn't want to go either. They didn't like it either. We haven't turned our back on this generation of soldiers. Please, as we wind down and we get out, stay with them. Thank you. All right, uh, and now for our final honor of the evening, the Regional Excellence Award. I'd like to call on Queen Creek Mayor Gail Barney to present this award. Mayor Barney? The Regional Excellent Award is presented to an individual who has demonstrated an outstanding commitment to the spirit of regionalism. Nomination may be made of any elected or appointed official or any private sector individual who has demonstrated significant leadership in regional issues. The judges selected two recipients for this category. First, we'd like to recognize Buckeye Mayor Jackie Meck. Let's listen. Mayor Jackie Meck's roots in the city of Buckeye go deep. He's never lived more than seven miles from where he was born. Mayor Meck has made it a mission to build jobs and opportunities in Buckeye, and he has been a passionate advocate for growing his city and the region. He currently serves on the MAG Regional Council and the MAG Economic Development Committee. As past president of the Buckeye Valley Chamber of Commerce, the mayor began a campaign called Buckeye is Open for Business, and he was instrumental in helping transition Buckeye from a town to a city. Our community may be in the shadows of the White Tank Mountains, he said during the renaming celebration, but the city of Buckeye is no longer in the shadows.
Transportation issues have also been a key focus for Mayor Meck, who serves as chair of the MAG Transportation Policy Committee and treasurer for the Interstate 11 Coalition. He has also served on the board of directors for Valley Metro. Mayor Meck is the retired general manager of the Buckeye Water Conservation and Drainage District. He also has served on the board of directors of the Greater Phoenix Economic Council and Westmark. They told us to go get a picture taken, and we were headed out to get a picture taken. Then they said, stop in the middle of the stream and come back. So I came back. Tonight, I'm proud to represent the city of Buckeye, Arizona's newest and largest city by land, spreading over 600 square miles. To win an award for regional excellence is the highest honor. Myself, along with many other West Valley mayors, know that working together is the only way that we are going to grow together. As mayor of Buckeye, I take a personal pride in promoting our great city that is open for business. Along with surrounding areas like F-35 at Luke Air Force Base in Glendale, cancer treatment centers of America in Goodyear, and Palo Verde Nuclear in Tonopah, we all have something great to offer. And I take this opportunity to send a challenge to each and every one of our mayors that when we promote the region, we all win. I graciously accept this award on behalf of the city of Buckeye and thank you all for the work that you do. The committee also selected a second recipient for this award, uh, Chandler Mayor Jay Tipsherady. Let's see his video. During his first eight years as the mayor of Chandler from 1994 to 2002, Mayor Jay Tipsherady helped Chandler grow into a major metropolitan city, the fourth largest in Arizona. While he led Chandler through this period of exceptional growth, he continued to focus on quality development in both the residential and commercial sectors of the city. After completing his first term, Mayor Tibshraney continued his public service as a state senator. During his eight years at the state legislature, he successfully sponsored bills to address problems related to the housing crisis by enhancing regulations on loan officers and increasing penalties for mortgage fraud. He returned as Chandler's mayor in 2011 and was re-elected in an unprecedented sixth term. He has focused on sustainable neighborhoods and was recognized as the 2013 Municipal Leader of the Year by American City and County Magazine for creating, protecting, and preserving the Price Corridor. Mayor Tibshraney has served as MAG Treasurer and on the Greater Phoenix Economic Council Board of Directors, Arizona League of Cities and Towns Executive Committee, and East Valley Partnership. Thanks for this wonderful honor. As a native and lifelong resident of the Valley, and specifically Chandler, this award means a lot to me. While my roots are in Chandler, my family has been part of Maricopa County for three generations. My father first immigrated to Mesa in the 1920s. He worked throughout the region, finally settling in Chandler. As a council member and then as a mayor in the 1980s and 90s, I understood the importance of making Chandler more than just a bedroom community. While I wanted it to be a great place for families, I also wanted it to become and to be a premier place for business. It's a delicate balance, but I'm proud to say we've been successful in Chandler in both these goals. Moving to the state Senate in 2003, there were many new challenges that faced the state and the county and the municipalities. Just as I had done as mayor, I worked to build relationships and to solve problems for the good of the whole, that meant working across the aisle in a bipartisan way. I've had the opportunity to work closely with many of the people in this room to ensure that both Chandler and the region continue to thrive. And so it's, uh, again, a real honor tonight to accept this award. Thank you very much. Well, this has been a tremendous uh, evening of celebration, uh, and now we come to our last very important item uh, of, of business, and that is the passing of the gavel. We have some unusual circumstances this year at MAG. Uh, it's been my pleasure to serve as chair of the MAG Regional Council for the past three months, 
and I look forward to another year of service, uh, but uh, since I can't pass the gavel to myself, I guess I could, but it would be kind of strange. Uh, we're actually going to have uh, former Mesa Mayor Scott Smith uh, do a virtual uh, passing of the gavel. Uh, he's uh, uh, indisposed tonight, he's, uh, as we speak, on a stage in Scottsdale uh, participating in a gubernatorial debate. So, as I said, he's, uh, he's going to uh, He's going to make some brief remarks in a video, uh, but first I, I want to say this. Uh, Scott Smith has been an energetic advocate uh, for MAG. In fact, uh, in his first chair's message, uh, he noted that he didn't want to be a board, didn't expect to be a board, and it's uh, safe to say he was not. There's a lot going on at MAG. Mayor Smith advanced a number of very important milestone projects for MAG, including working with the EPA on exceptional dust events, he educated them about the meaning of Habu. Uh, and uh, it was in large part due to those efforts that the EPA recently uh, approved the uh, MAG 5% plan. He was also active in efforts to change the conversation regarding Mexico, championing I-11, and supporting the development of a metropolitan business plan in partnership with the Brookings Institution. With that synopsis of the remarkable job that Chair Smith has done, I'd like to turn it over to him for a virtual passing of the gavel. So let's roll the video. For the past six years, I had the great opportunity and honor of serving as the mayor of Mesa. And as part of that, I also had the privilege of working with some of the finest individuals that I've ever met. That's the elected officials and the staff at MAG. I had the great opportunity to serve first as chair of the Transportation Policy Committee and get a firsthand look at our unique challenges, especially in the midst of a deep recession and then working through the Economic Development Committee and as chair for the past year. I've had the opportunity and privilege of seeing both the past but most importantly the future of our region. And I can tell you the future is in good hands. Uh, working with Mayor Marie Lopez Rogers and certainly Mayor Lavalt has been an honor for me and I know that MAG is in good hands. I know that facing challenges such as the EPA challenge that we had, working together both at the regional level, the county level, the state level, we can meet any challenge and we can take advantage of any opportunity we have. So thank you to all for the wonderful opportunity you have given to me, for the honor you have given me to serve as chair of MAG, but also thank you for giving me hope, hope in the future and confidence that with the leadership of Mayor LaVault and the other elected officials and the staff of MAG, that my children and my grandchildren will look forward to a great future here in Maricopa County. Thank you, congratulations, and now Mayor LaVault, the gavel is yours. I look forward to your continuing support. And finally, before we go, I'd like a, a, a rousing round of applause for our great MAG staff for putting on this program tonight. Thank you, staff, and uh, that concludes our program tonight. Please drop your badges uh, in the boxes as you leave, and please drive safely on your way home. Thank you, folks.